Accessing health care can be a challenge in many rural communities across Africa. This change maker in Lesotho is bridging the gap by equipping workers with the tools they need to reach even the most remote villages. If you talk about health system in Lesotho, there's no way you can talk about health system strengthening without mentioning riders for health. I realize that we have managed to penetrate all different areas of health service delivered in this country. And that's what I love about my job because I realize how relevant it is. We are leaders in empowering the healthcare community with reliable transport throughout Africa. I'm Mahadi Shasawani, County Director, Riders for Health Lesotho. I am a change maker. Just outside of Lesotho's capital city of Maseru, Mahadi Hlasawani is meeting two Riders for Health drivers as they gear up for a busy day. The Riders start from here every morning. The non-profit mobilizes workers across five African countries so they can provide health services to rural villages. Each one of them visits two or three health centers in a day. So they'll pick up samples from one health center, package them, go to the next health center, and then they bring them to the lab for testing. So tomorrow, they will take back the results to the health center so that the clinicians can make a decision on the, or put initial treatment on the patients. For more than a decade, Mahadi has been running the organization's program in Lesotho. Today, she is joining the riders on their route. Hey, uh, we are in one remote area outside Beria district. You can see it's very far from the hospital and there's no clinic nearby. So they rely on the health workers coming to them. Lesotho has one of the highest HIV rates in the world. Since Riders for Health began working in the nation and making transportation between villages and labs more accessible, Mahadi says they've seen a significant reduction in turnaround time for test results. Some samples take longer to process, but here we are talking about two to three days, people will be getting their results back at the health centers. Before they would take like three months, two months, sometimes they would not even end up getting the results because the sample will be destroyed. But when the riders established this system, people were able to be put on treatment and also they were able to detect uh, HIV on pregnant women so that they protect the, the children. The system has made sure that everybody has access to laboratory services. Like the road the riders travel along, Mahadi's path to success has been filled with twists and turns. I have always had that passion to, to help people. Initially, I wanted to be in the army, and then I wanted to be a police because I wanted to follow in my father's footsteps. But then when I started seeing people getting sick, I developed passion for joining the health system. <laughs> This is where I started working as a health worker. Immediately from the health training college, I was assigned to this hospital. My main responsibilities was uh, prevention and control of communicable diseases. I would go through the hospital records and see that most of the diseases that people were presenting with are actually preventable diseases. But I got very frustrated because I realized that there are so many people in the rural areas and to get to them, you need some form of transport. I complained to my boss, I said, what's the point of training us on these things when you know we can't reach the people? How are we expected to help them? Her career took a detour in 1991, when Riders for Health expanded to Lesotho and typed Mahadi to be a driver. I'm a health professional. I didn't know anything about bikes when I joined, so I was the first person Riders for Health trained when they go to this country. From that day on, I got my independence. So I was able to ride to all the villages. Mahadi went on to become the organization's first female trainer. So we want to make sure that they are safe. So we, we incorporate the off-road part of the training, and then we do defensive, a defensive riding so that they are safe on the road. After taking some time off to further her studies, in 2008, Mahadi was named Lesotho's country director for Riders for Health. 
Since then, 250 riders have been trained across the nation. When I started working for Riders Pilot, it was only just pushing on on the mission I started because now instead of me doing it myself, I can help more people do it. Because if there are 190 bikes out there for health workers who are doing exactly what I wanted to see being done, it's more than me doing it. But what happens when the organization hits a bump in the road? If one vehicle breaks down, it interrupts the whole service. Imagine a, a, an ambulance breaking along the way, transporting a patient's emergency referral. The health of that person could be affected. Next, Mahadi shows us how her team stays ahead of the game and keeps their fleet in mint condition. I still miss riding motorbikes. Riding motorbikes is a lot of fun, especially off-road riding. It gives you some sense of freedom. While Mahadi Hlasa is no longer riding a motorcycle to remote villages in Lesotho, she's still in the driver's seat of the country's healthcare revolution. Everything I do is, is public health. I, I thank God because I was given the knowledge of how to to live well and how to prevent people from getting sick. Everywhere I go, I teach people, I give the knowledge I know, I tell people, you know, you can, there's a way of avoiding this. Mahadi is the country director for the Riders for Health program in Lesotho. The non-profit equips health workers with the vehicles they need to service rural communities. The main aspect of Riders is to make sure that all the, the health services get to the people where they need to. And you can't do that without proper transport. When we started, we found there were some vehicles who had like 500, 5,000 mileage, and some of them were not working anymore. So we realized that for the vehicles to take longer, they have to be looked after properly. In addition to maintaining nearly 200 motorcycles of their own, the non-profit partners with the Ministry of Health and manages their vehicles. Today, Mahadi is checking in on their feet. This is where we have about eight mechanics working in this workshop. This particular one he's working on has a problem with cylinder head, so they're trying to work in that and then fix some few things on the engine, and then it will be back in the district. We have to make sure that all the time we have the right parts in stock so that when they break down or if anything happens, you're able to fix them and get them back to the districts as quickly as possible. So it's huge responsibility. But it's a challenge Mahadi is ready to accept, thanks to the lessons she learned as a child. My role model has always been my father. I saw my father working hard and giving us a good life. We were six in the family. We had the best childhood. We never suffered. And he would tell me that if you want to live well, you have to work hard for everything you, you in life. So I realized that if you just put your, your mind to it, you know, everything is easy, but you need to work hard. After leaving the workshop, Mahadi checks in on a health clinic about two hours outside of the capital. Okay, we are at St. Lona Health Center in Simongong area. We've been working together for more than 10 years, just making sure that whenever they need to go to the communities, the transport is there and it's available, and that all the samples collected here get down to Maseru, are tested, and they get the results as soon as possible. Before Riders Health came with this reliable transport, every person could charge the patient whatever amount he wants because we're using the transport for the business people. Now, you know, the lives of the people were saved. Mahadi says nothing will stop her team from trying to reach even the most remote communities. There are places which are very difficult to, to reach and there's no road infrastructure. So in that case, the people use horses either to transport the samples or the health workers to bring reports to the health center. They will be checking in the villages if there are any people who are on chronic medication. It makes me feel like at least we are doing what we are supposed to be doing, reaching everyone with health care whether there is transport or no transport. The next step for me would be really to 
increase on what we are doing. There are still some areas we are not reaching in Lesotho. I think we reach about 80% of the population now because of the terrain. So if we could uh, be able to have a system that would make sure that these people are accessed regularly like the other people in the country. So that's where I want riders to go. Even if it means uh, deploying drones or any other means, being innovative, find some innovative way to be able to reach this hard to reach populations regularly with healthcare services because that's what they need. Not one person in the country deserves to die. While Mahadi is determined to find a way to conquer Lesotho's difficult terrain, she still manages to embrace the beauty around her. You know, the people are lovely. We have a nation. People here love each other. It makes me feel good that we have come so far with Riders for Health. I remember in 1991 when I first got in contact with the founders of this organization. I was just a child then, and I've grown with Riders for Health. <laughs> I'm so happy, I couldn't have done anything better. Thanks so much for watching. For more content, head to cnn.com slash African Voices. I'm Maritopo, and I'll be back soon with more Changemakers.